More than 300 guests have gathered in the ancient Chinese city of Xi'an for an international seminar on the Belt and Road Initiative. With the theme, Shared Memory, Common Development, the seminar seeks to explore ways to expand on the concept. Our own Wang Chongxuan has this report. It's been three years since Chinese President Xi Jinping put forward the proposal to revive the ancient trade route and look for shared growth. We should note that the outcomes in terms of speed and scale of the Belt and Road Initiative have been better than expected. Now we have a clearer vision of the prospects of this initiative and are more confident in accomplishing it. Today, more than 100 countries and international organizations are involved. A lot of secrets already came through Sudan. We have a port called Sawakin already. That those came a long time ago there. So we are really looking forward for uh, this project that it can help Sudan in um, a lot of things, in, uh, uh, especially in economic, economic and building uh, a lot of. Uh, and the projects in Sudan, we need the uh, help of uh, this road, which is a project that we need uh, in Sudan. Research conducted by Renmin University reveals that China has invested about 50 billion U.S. dollars in the countries along the route. To eliminate tax barriers, more than 50 treaties were signed. Given China's leading role in decades of global development, the Belt and Road Initiative has become a defining strategy for economic outreach to its partners. Countries along the route have already tangibly benefited from the effort. In June this year, the new Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank provided half a billion U.S. dollars on investment projects in power, transportation and urban development in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Pakistan and Tajikistan. This initiative is a bilateral benefit for everybody. It's a give and take initiative. I mean, uh, China is giving and taking, and the people are uh, along the road, they are uh, taking and giving. I mean, that's the way it goes. And uh, you, you mentioned Lebanon. Uh, I may say that uh, uh, this prosperity that's coming up to the, to the area, to the Middle East area, I'm sure this prosperity will be against uh, aggressiveness and against uh, the war and against things because it will stabilize things. Uh, poverty is, uh, is, a, is a good place for, for, for wars and for uh, troubles. But when prosperity uh, comes in, we 